Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, James, the Fat Man Stevens, and the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Brewer. We have hey. a guest, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else is going to put up all John's shit. And this was a last minute replacement because not only did Ryan flake on us, but the other guests flake on us. So ladies and gentlemen, it's just like radio. I d- what radio program are you watching or listening to that has I would always be <laughs> listening to but um I've listened that- to a number one a number of over the years when they say hey oh looks like they flaked on us <laughs> so I got a couple of stories the first one I kind of feel guilty because I didn't know this person well she's not alive anymore but she was at one point um was it Carol I'm sorry Carol Channing is dead at 97 um I did not know she was still kicking. She is incredibly famous. Um, she's been in like Family Guy episodes. Uh, hold on. If you scroll through her stuff, it's going to take a while. I guarantee if you don't know who she is, she's incredibly famous. The Love Boat. Th- what was right. her name again? Carol Channing. Carol Channing. Last name I, C-H-A-N-N-I-N-G. I can't say that I ever heard of her. I mean. Oh, I, she has a face you recognize. She's a very old-time actress, very yeah, popular in the 70s, yeah. uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, I was just surprised she was still kicking it. That that really surprised me. I, You know, I looking at her, she looks kind of familiar, but I can't really place her in anything. I mean, I probably saw her in a few things, but uh, the programs don't sound like anything I was very much interested in. This topic went over like a fart in church. I know, I'm just... I mean, I'm sorry she died, I guess, but obviously she lived a long life. I'm trying to figure out, like, I, just, I, I know of her, and she's been in a ton of stuff, but I was I trying mean, to love Boat. Right? That's um, the only one that would really stick out in my memory, but I wasn't a real Love Boat fan. You'd have to, unfortunately, I am not used to IMDb on my iPad. Usually I use my phone, and so I'm trying to scroll through it, and it's not working as well as uh, it did. Well, that's on you and so, your Apple products. So, right. So I'll switch <laughs> to my other one. This one made me laugh. Red Dead Redemptions 2. Pinkerton agents are at the center of a lawsuit. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the Pinkerton detective agency is still alive and suing Rockstar for using their name. Wait a second. The Pinkertons were in the first one, too. Not by name, they weren't. Oh, that's true, I guess. I just, I, I'm i pretty sure that there was they used the Pinkerton name in it. Um, I'm just thinking, like, what what is the big issue this time? So, let's see. The publisher of Red Dead Redemption 2 has thrown down a legal gauntlet against the security company, Pinkerton, which demanded royalties for using its name in the game. So... I'm not sure, unless they don't like it's the way it's portrayed. The Pinkertons are, you know, they're all over the Wild West stories. So I'm not quite sure. I'm just really curious as to why it's an issue this go around. Oh, I love this. The order demands that take two pi- the pay. order? Oh, okay. The court order. The court, I meant no, you, it's the uh, Pinkerton order. Are they <clears> like yeah, Grand Masons now? <laughs> but never oh, mind. You, here it court is. order. I see, but claiming it was. Uh, the, Pinkerton Consulting and Investigations, now a a subsidiary of the security firm Securitas, seriously, delivered its cease and desist desist order in December, roughly two months after the game was released. It commented the game developer studio's Rockstar's clear affection for Pinkertons, but claimed it was trading on the goodwill and associated with the company's trademarks. I don't know of any goodwill on the Pinkertons when it comes to Wild West stories. In modern in modern media, they weren't really traded well. Uh, particular, it was American Outlaw hmm. um, was the first one that comes to mind. They didn't really seem like they, I don't know, there was any goodwill attached. What do you think, Matt? Uh, pretty much after Alan Pinkerton died, it turned into not a very nice organization. Uh, I think the thing that they're trying to do here is the fact that not only are they using the name, but they're also using the badge and they're Uh, saying that's a trademark. But I think this falls under fair use because it's being used in a, and I'm using air quotes, so I say historical context. So they, they honestly, they just want a piece of the pie. I, I would say you're right on that, on that aspect. I'm just in the point of like, why is this such an issue now? You know, I've seen lots of different, documentaries and other things that 
use the Pinkerton thing, but I never really go through the site, you know, uh, credit section to see if Pinkerton was ever um, given uh, any type of, um, I guess, name drop as far as thanks to the Pinkerton for whatever, you know, type thing. <clears throat> the only thing I could think of is maybe at this point, since video games are multi yeah they're they're, they're dollar becoming industry. Uh, they're becoming an incredibly grossing industry I, my assumption would be it probably sold more copies of video games than movies especially with microtransactions so maybe it's the thing the fact that the people up top the suits are realizing hey red dead's using our name let's get some cash it's a good move i just think it's weird that they didn't you know that it's in the story it doesn't talk about them knocking on the door and going hey you know we'd love to further this relationship but we need some cash for you know you using our property because it would be the hmm. same thing if anybody was using like uh i don't know the the oh, using mickey mouse you're talking about using the master chief from halo you're using something it's somebody's intellectual property you got to get rights to use it yeah i mean i understand that i mean that's kind of why we didn't do movie clips or really um, any type of <laughs> audio snippets from them for the RFR that we used to do. Well, the reason I was scared, I wasn't necessarily scared of using the clips. I was scared of YouTube's kind of 1984-ish um, <laughs> copyright claims because we, we had an episode pulled for literally just using the name of the movie. Yeah. Um, we... Did we ever get any answer from that jackass? No, um, we hmm. got we the. I don't remember. YouTube. I don't remember the, the actual episode title. You think I do homework, but no. Apparently, this time I didn't. It was that one with Keanu Reeves. It's kind of Scanner Darkly. Yes, yes. Scanner Darkly. I got the show back. So apparently, what happens is um, he just pulls it. <laughs> the company flags and says, "Hey, this is our content. We want it removed, or we want you know, say if I'm pulling ads against it, they say just give us the revenue." Um, so what happened on this time is I think the guy, when that happens, it goes to you and say, would you like to fight this or just leave it deleted? So I fought it yeah. said, and then there's like a little box that gives you a description. I said, this is my content. I own the copyright to the show. I had, however, did not use any content that was yours. There's no title, uh, like the font, the screen, there's nothing, no yeah. pictures, no images. And there's no artwork or anything. Exactly. Like um, anything that would be their technical copyright. And, um, and the guy just ignored it. It, it bugs that. Well, that's a completely different sidebar. I can go on a, a long rant of why I, I'm not a big fan of YouTube. But anyways, I just don't, I don't think they're, I don't know. I don't think they're going to win <laughs> against it, but I, I, I hope not. I mean, it's not I, like they're going to pull the game. Or, I mean, I agree with Matt. I think it being a hundred percent fair use, Yeah, but I could see them winning solely based on the fact that it's their trademark. Um, I'm kind of amused at the Pinkertons having badges. I mean, is it like a... <coughs> this, I mean, those stinking badges. Well, this is kind of a sidebar. I remember I was in a coffee shop once, and this, this coffee shop had an alcohol license, and they were using the previous owner's alcohol license. And so if anybody's not familiar with what it is, there's a short period of grace period when you're buying a restaurant, so you can... Uh, pretty much put the alcohol license under your name. They didn't do that. And this guy from, was it ABC? Is that the uh, alcohol beverages control? Something ATF? like that. ATF? Alcohol beverage control or whatever. Oh, oh this, I don't, I don't even know that. This, this, oh, yeah, that's okay. a, yeah, that'd be for, for state, state yeah. uh, municipalities and stuff like that. So this this uh, ABC cop, basically, and literally he had a badge <laughs> that might have been an inch tall. He had it in the palm of his hand, said, and there was this little girl behind the counter. She couldn't have been more than 20 years old. This 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 uh, enforcement agency, agent, whatever you call him, actually it's revenuer, that's what I'm going to call him. This revenuer actually went up to this little girl and says, as of such and such a day to such and such a time, you're no longer allowed to sell alcohol. And this poor girl was like, what do I do? And the manager came out and said, okay, no problem, pulled all the alcohol. So I am totally imagine this Pinkerton guy going, I'm from the Pinkerton Detection Agency. You may need a micro magnifying glass. I because it was it was like I've never inch. seen I think I've seen Pinkerton badges, but not enough to where they stand out. I, <clears throat> I've seen I'm assuming, unless they're custom made, I've seen uh, security officers' badges, you know, the Renicott badges. So I'm assuming it's just one of those. That's what I consider. I mean, there are companies out there that will just make you a badge just 
for whatever. I mean, they're kind of more of a, a you can buy them online. Novelty items. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, they don't really hold anything, <clears throat> any type of weight behind them. I mean, you can probably throw it at somebody and hurt them. But, you know, Besides that's about all they're get, good for. Except for probably getting in trouble for flashing it because you could probably saying that you're, uh, uh, was it uh, pretending to be an officer of the law type of thing? Well, it depends on if you're trying to, like, make anyone do anything, <laughs> trying to pretend like you have any authority. Oh, off the air, I got a story about a former local law enforcement. I I, I, I got to tell James. <laughs> I, I don't want to incriminate the guy because I kind of <laughs> heard it in a way that I shouldn't have. Um, so how do you feel about M. Night Shyamalan, Matt? Uh, I think he used to do really good work. I haven't seen anything since The Happening, but I heard Split was really, really good. So... We're famous, infamous against the three and a half people have actually watched Shalom any of our stuff. Dipshit. Of we stopped we the, after the six <laughs> after the six cents we didn't we stopped actually James and I both didn't really like anything after the six cents because it was really predictable. Mm -hmm. um, he did something really cool at the latest movie, which I think is Glass. Yeah, yeah, it is Glass. Um, which I want to give him a lot of props. By the way, this is the first time you'll ever hear me say a lot of props in M. Night Shyamalan in the same sentence. He self-financed uh, the, uh, self the latest movie. Um, I think that is so cool. I mean, if you're a filmmaker and, and have a film you want to do, just uh, Mel Gibson did the same thing with Passion of the Christ, of, of put your money where your mouth is. I, I wish more people would do that so they could, uh, you know, basically show Hollywood because no Hollywood, like apparently that guy couldn't, couldn't get any backers. Yeah. So basically make sure you don't have to worry about, about, um, Producers. studio, studio committee and all that kind of, yeah. uh, rambunctiousness. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think that is so amazing that instead of being, <laughs> you know, uh, filmmaking by committee, you can do your, 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 your vision solely. I would say that was one of the reasons I think Blade Runner had issues because there's like four cuts of Blade Runner. That's the original, true. you mean? Well, cause on Blade Runner, there's a theatrical edition. There's a, I think there's a director's edition. There's the final cut edition and there's one more edition. The, the work print edition. The what? The work print edition. What's mm. that? I, that's one I'm not familiar with. What's the difference on it's, that one? It's kind of, kind of like what the final cut was supposed to be, but. Uh, a little, okay. It just it wasn't cleaned up as well as it should have been, and it's very very rare. Hmm. Huh. I'll have to eBay it if I could. For probably <laughs> a shit ton of money since there's so many Blade Runner fans. I mean, <clears throat> it's like the pink edition of Reservoir Dogs. Except I I just recently found it and couldn't <laughs> buy it because I don't need two or three copies of Reservoir Dogs. Uh, I think that will, if you got that one, it would make it three. I think. Um. <sighs> The other one that's kind of difficult to find, from what I understand, is the white one. You know, Mr. Pink, uh, Steve Buscemi. Oh, another sad news. Buscemi. Um, I'm going to, I can't pronounce anything. His wife just passed away. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know anything I, about it. I was going to say, do you know what of? I don't. It was one of these things. I, I just saw the article in passing that is, I think he was said something like his wife of 30 years had just oh, recently man. passed away. That sucks. Um, I like him. Our condolences. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he plays a great psychopath. And even in, uh, um, what was the one that he did on his own? Was it a tree? Is or it, we, I think we watched it for uh, RFR, but it was a tree something. I can't think of it anymore. You're, you're, you're asking but me that to was, remember a movie that we did on Real Flix Reviews? He did a lot of movies on Real Flix Reviews. <laughs> That's so why. I, it's, it's like, I'm I mean, just saying, I, I know that he did his own film like way back when. And I mean, he didn't play the, the, psychopath that he usually kind of goes with but anyways i i agree with you i think he is a fantastic actor but um plays a really good crazy weird guy though i mean he does have a face for radio but that's part of his charm uh, yeah i mean he is very distinct but i'll be completely <laughs> honest <laughs> so does um quentin tarantino and i'd rather see steve bishimi I really can't choose one or the other on that. I mean, uh, I... Well, Steve can act. Well, I think I Nobody's, find him more amusing than I would Quentin Tarantino. How about that? Nobody's ever accused a Tar Quentin Tarantino of being a good actor. That is true. I mean, he is Mr. Brown. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. God, I love that movie. <laughs> I can't. It is one of the best movies ever made. I, I, I should I should probably tell you guys I do have a copy of the 15th anniversary that that came in the gas can and the DVDs oh, are inside nice. of the book of matches. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have that one, the gas can one, and the lid keeps coming off. At some point, I think I lost some of the paperwork in it. I was really pissed. Um. Yeah, so I, you know, I was kind of wanting to kind of stick on the the suing thing for a little while. I didn't know that was what you were going to bring up at first, but um, Wait, maybe we should ask Matt if you have any topics before we get into more. <laughs> you know, I, I think as the uh, uh, as far as last minute, I wouldn't expect him to have a bunch of topics, but that's all right. Hey, you never give know. It to him. Do you have any topics, Matt? Uh, just regarding anything at all. Yeah, pretty much uh, anything but politics. I'm kind of excited that they're that we're getting a proper Ghostbusters movie next year. Yes, I, I saw the the teaser trailer and I was really pissed because it's just a teaser trailer. Yeah, I but still have yet to see to the it. female version. What did you say, I, Matt? I don't know. What, I, was, I, I said I just it's a teaser. We have a date. I'm I'm just excited about that. So the thing that makes me the saddest about this is Bill Murray didn't want to do it for so long and my favorite mm-hmm. character won't be in it. Yeah. Um Egon. Um I'm I'm they're they're, they're going to do something for him. I'm actually kind of hoping maybe they make a ghost like him in the background. Or, That'd be kind of cool. Um I I want it because is is a giant fan of Ghostbusters. I hated the female version and it wasn't because the particular actress is in it. It's be the fact that they did the one thing that Ghostbusters didn't. The reason for me Ghostbusters was, was funny is they treated it like a serious movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The newer Ghostbusters, it was all slapstick and all, oh, aren't we making fun of this? This is like, this isn't funny because you're missing the point of the first one. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. Uh, I didn't, I refused not so much because of the actresses or actors in it, but because I knew that they did what John said is they didn't have the they didn't treat it the same way that they should have with it. I mean, that's the, as you said, that's the most interesting and funny part of the movie is that there was such a serious undertone through most of it. And they had, uh, a, I would say kind of like a appropriate humor at times that made the movie more enjoyable. That gave it its, its charm. How about that? My favorite part. And I don't remember if it's the first or second one. Egon was, uh, somebody make a joke about, uh, about, Egon drilling a hole in his head and Egon goes, that would have worked if you hadn't stopped me. I mean, just yeah, that's in the first one, right, right before the, uh, they go into the basement of the library. Oh, that's right. I'm definitely have to squeak. My wife, I don't think is a big fan of ghostbusters. And now that I have a toddler, I can't watch that as readily, but I'm, I'm going to have to find squeeze some time into watch the, the first one. I wasn't a giant fan of the second one, mainly because as a little kid, it scared the bejesus out of me. Cause I saw mm-hmm. that one in theaters. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, you're, I, 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 but I, I, I love Ghostbusters. I saw that, and you saw Ecto-1 in the barn, and it was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super jazzed. Um, I'm kind of curious on how they're going to pay this off, because in all honesty, I don't see any of the surviving members really going to be able to pull it off. So I have a feeling this is going to be a true passing of the torch. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling my, my big theory on it is they're going to do a, they're going to open maybe act. The first part of act one is going to be the old guard. And then they're going to hire a bunch of new people, sell the audience on it and then pass that torch on at the end of the movie. (laughs) Yeah, no, I can totally see that. That makes sense. And and now kind of basis off your theory. I have a feeling Egon's son and or daughter is going to be in this. And I have a feeling it's not going to be an all male cast, which I'm totally cool with, but I have a yeah. feeling that's what it's going to play with. And I think there's going to see, be some dynamics that way that can be, you can really play off with. Mm-hmm. I just, For sure. as long as it's not like the, the, the latest movie, was it 2016? Cause that was a God awful movie. <laughs> I, I can't get back any time. I, I, I saw that movie. Um, yeah, that's, so I don't go to the theater very often. It's expensive. <laughs> right? At, at this point, you know, I don't want to, I've seen enough stupid movies in my life. I no longer want to pay the penalty of seeing them in theaters. Mm-hmm. So, okay, James. So, um, 
I was actually trying to see if they actually had a time frame of how long this person actually was there. Uh, I came across this thing that um, there was a dishwasher in Miami who got fired from her job, but she turned around and sued them for violation of her religious rights by repeatedly scheduling her to work on Sundays. And a jury awarded her compensation. Can you just kind of give me a random guess as to how much compensation this jury decided she was do- Probably at least in the millions of dollars range. $21.5 million. I, I, I Question. Since you're a professional cook... This is a dishwasher. Yeah, but 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 hold on, hold on. He, James Stevens is a professional cook. I can actually tell him to go back in the kitchen, and he can't be angry at me. Um, Sundays and Saturdays are two of the busiest days in the restaurant industry. Are are correct? Yeah, that kind of goes without saying. Um, so if a dishwasher said I can't work Sundays, I, I don't understand why the restaurant would keep said person around because during one a hotel, but yeah, same thing. And so I'm assuming she's Christian then. I am assuming that she has some type of religion thing that she's throwing in there, whether it be Christian, Muslim, or any other Sunday practicing religion. So is, is a, as a religious person, I guess Mormonism would fall in there. I don't know. As a religious person, I've worked on plenty of Sundays and I hated it every time, but <laughs> I needed the money more than I de- needed to go to the church. Right now in my current job, I work every Sunday and that isn't an <laughs> issue for me because that's the industry I picked and chose to do. Um, the lady is 60 years old. It doesn't have in here. I try to find um, how long she supposedly had been working for this place because, I mean, they gave her 21.6 of it. They're not going to be able to pay every bit of it, but uh, she was due 35 grand in back wages, and they're giving her half a million dollars for emotional pain and mental anguish. I'm confused on the... the- I don't know exactly where they came. Oh, here. It oh, sir. So she's a member of the Soldiers of Church. All right. Soldiers of Church Christ, which is a Catholic missionary group. I'm. I've just I've never heard of. I thought it was going to be Church of Christ. but I guess I'm not. confused on the back pay. That's what I'm kind of confused as too. that's why I was trying to find something that said how long she had had been there. And uh, the the lawyer said that he is expecting the half a million dollars to be awarded because... The- you, you know, I, I have to say, <laughs> um, it, as much as I find it ridiculous, I, I, I can't crap on anybody for getting a payday. Um, it's a little bit more than I, I would say um, as somebody who's worked a, most Sundays in his life in, in retail, I think it's a little ridiculous. Um but hey, you know, more power to you. It's you'll never have to work again, or even getting half of that. Well, um, she's not going to get the the twenty one point whatever even, million dollars. He's expecting that. Um, well, if, if she gets, there's a cap that's going to stop it. So he's expecting the the half a million dollars because there's the punitive cap in. So if you get half damages, a million dollars but, with taxes, she'll get two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. The actual lawyer admitted to asking initially for thirty million dollars. So still now I I'm just wondering. First of all, what dishwasher? I mean, what did they hire her for? I mean, like, how much pay did they hire her for that she's even getting thirty five grand? Well, my my first thought was during the and and I don't know was it Florida? Yeah, that's in Florida. I don't know Florida laws, but every job I've ever applied for has in the application, whether it's online, whether it's hard copy, always says, what days can you work? Yeah. And with jobs I've had, we say, I I cannot work Sundays. I've never got the job because they need, because every job I've ever had that's in retail needs people to work Sundays because nobody likes working Sundays. And, and, you know, and and unless you're a (laughs) Chick-fil-A, which isn't open on Sundays, I'm really confused. 
I don't understand it. I don't either. I'm just really, but that's why I'm trying to also find out how long she's been working there. But they're they're decided that <laughs> back pay is thirty five grand. She's at least have got to be there for a couple years. I have a feeling they were doing. There was more to this than meets the eye. There must have been something fishy. Like they were like they were playing around with her pay. There had to be more to this than just that she's you know was not allowed. Well, they ultimately place. fired her, so. Um, She's obviously not going for wrongful termination that I can, that I've seen in there. But that might be something that's in the case. I just well, discrimination I'm just wondering is, like half a million dollars. Well, dis- discrimination is easier, I think, to win a lawsuit with than, oh, yeah. than proving that they were, you know, playing hokey pokey with our hours. Well, anyways, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted about uh, that. Me that's, too. That's that's uh, damn. <laughs> Right? I, I'm just really in the mode of, like, can I go and work at this place right now? I mean, they might be on guard for this now, but, you know. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break our rules a little bit and talk just skin deep on politics because something <laughs> happened today that I, I actually got weird looks at work because I was laughing so hard. So in the United States, and I didn't know this, apparently the Speaker of the House can, has to invite the president um to do the state of the, the union thing. Yeah. I didn't know that. You so didn't? no, I didn't oh. actually realize that. Huh. Um, so Nancy Pelosi was the speaker of the house said no. So Trump canceled canceled her airplane tickets basically said, you can't use air force one to go overseas. Um, I, I find this funny <laughs> because oh, this, this great. is, this is, this is like high school. Kindergarten? Sp- yes, yeah. thank you. I, w- I was trying to think of something like non-cussing. So you're going to go to high school, huh? I, I, I find this funny. Um, the, the you don't older- get to play with my ball anymore. I'm trying to. Stop playing with my balls, Nancy. I'm trying to learn how to in- enjoy <laughs> politics on an amusing level. So I was hoping that if people are frustrated with like, politics like I am, um, because I found that absolutely hilarious um give me a second ladies and gentlemen our guest host is having minor issues probably because the connection here is a couple of tin cans matt can you hear me hold on give me give me one second i have to connect you back to our mixer do you hear me now yeah i hear you just fine okay (laughs) so what didn't you hear (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I heard what you guys were saying, but yeah, you were you were talking about uh, the State of the Union Air Force One. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Situation. You, did, you, did. <laughs> you didn't miss anything. Yeah. Uh, basically, no, no. basically, we're saying you know this is like you know uh, preschool rules. You know, it, <laughs> I I I get so stressed about politics because I have a certain worldview. I won't go any deeper than that. But so mm-hmm. politics it kind of stresses me out. And when I saw this, I was laughing because finally there's, there's something for once that we have octogenarian. They're both practically in their eighties. I know Nancy is, and they're, they're doing this. I think this is hilarious. This is the single greatest piece of news for me in the last two years. Um, so I, I got to say, if there's any of you are listening to this, if you find weird, wacky stuff that happens with your politics worldwide, would you send it to me on our Facebook page? Because I want to share the ridiculous ridiculousness of politics. Because this made me laugh really good, or really well, whatever the proper use of English is. So, um, and by the way, Matt, feel free to jump in anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to upset the flow or anything. Oh no! I, it's um, I no. Just jump in any time. I there there is. You no, got to have an opinion. This. The, oh, I mean, of course I do. I've got an opinion on everything. <laughs> Welcome to the Mad Trio Show. You're you're definitely fit in with a with, with the hooligans here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't see that part. I just saw his. Uh, I just saw the president's uh, rebuttal, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Which I was just kind of sitting there going, he, 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 he. it's fun watching things implode. <laughs> right? At some point, you just want to watch the world burn. And I'm having yeah. a hell of a time watching it. I'm going to sit back with my old-fashioned Amaro and and just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can't <laughs> just get upset about everything. I know too many people that get upset over every little petty thing going on in the 
<laughs> political arena these days. So I was thinking about this. <laughs> and one of my favorite all-time documentaries is a pretty much a BBC only. So it's, I think it's only available in England. Um, but basically what it is, it, it's talking about like the 16th century, you know, the Edwardian period, Victorian period, stuff like that. And back when, you know, stuff that mattered was life or death. Oh, oh, you're sick. You can't work the farm. You may not be able to feed your family type of thing. And so this is totally like first world problems when everything is taken care of. Now it's like, you, you, you might've scratched my car. <laughs> I, I think that's what it is. This is. This world has finally become a Monty Python sketch. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. The, the, the question is, what I want to know what Monty Python sketch. I mean, is it like Life of Bry? <laughs> I mean, I want to oh, know. Oh, no, it it's, it's the, uh, it's the uh, I came in here for an argument sketch. <laughs> but, you're, but you're stuck in the room where you're just getting abuse. Well, so. the, also the one where the guy is basically building the out in the muck and he's like, Oh, look at it. I'm being oppressed by the, <laughs> by the fascist government. Yep. Look, look, I'm, I'm being repressed. Yeah. That, so, that's the one. So, or, you know, like so the we're all a bunch of lumberjacks. Punch and, we're all a bunch of punch and Judy dolls basically at this mm -hmm. point. Um, Oh God. I, uh, I'm trying to find other news cause there's so much happened, but all you see every day is politics, politics, and, I finally had to turn off my favorite radio show because all all there is to talk about is politics, and I was kind of sad about that. Because <laughs> but between that and political correctness, which hey, I'm okay with some political correctness, but you know when you call a, a woman of ill repute a sexual maintenance partner, I think you've crossed the line a little bit. <laughs> That's some clever wording. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, wish I could take credit for that. Yeah. But nobody will know where I got it from since that <laughs> since I'm the only person who probably remembers that line. Um, oh God. Oh, uh, any of you guys in the wrestling? Oh yeah, I, you haven't been I for am. a few years. Um, Cody Rhodes, the son of the great late Dusty Rhodes, uh, starting a new promotion with the Young Bucks called All Elite. Was it All Elite Wrestling? Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. which I'm super jazzed about. Basically, it's a bunch of indie darlings. <laughs> who are starting the new promotion. Cause one of the issues with work, working with Vince McMahon, you have no creative freedom. And if you work for TNA, you have no freedom cause you're starving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and they're apparently they're, they have a billionaire backing them and they have one of the biggest names in the industry. They have Chris Jericho. Oh, mm -hmm. um, and they have Billy Gunn as one of the producers. What? Yeah. I just read that the other day. He's going to be doing uh, some of the backstage stuff. Hmm. That's that could awesome. be pretty cool. So I'm super jazzed to see how it goes. I know they did uh, all was all in last year in Chicago and sold it out along with StarCast. So they're doing double or nothing this year in Las Vegas with StarCast 2. I'm hoping it's a big thing because I'd love to see a legitimate competition. Um. I kind of agree with Jim Cornette. If you don't know who Jim Cornette, he's an old school wrestling uh, manager. I'd love to see a more serious take on wrestling. If you can do that, like Vince McMahon is ridiculous. Like they have a heavyweight title, but there's no heavyweight division. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have yeah. tag team titles, but there's no technically any tag teams. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out because my dad actually brought attention to that uh, last week, last Sunday, where I was eating dinner with my parents. And my dad actually said, so are there any weight classes in wrestling? It's like <laughs> there used to be. <laughs> mm -hmm, there sure used to be when, when, decades ago in, in the seventies and eighties um, before Vince McMahon killed the industry kind of. Um, yeah. They, they kind of stopped doing, they stopped really paying attention to that in like the middle mid of the last decade when they were like, eh, we don't care. I think once, cause I was a WCW fan and I think once they bought purchased WCW, they didn't really have anybody to fight against. And, and now you have somebody who you got a couple of people with, with name recognition. I really hope that turns out well, cause I'm, I'm excited cause WWE is as dull as dirt. Yeah. The, if you want to go, the, the closest thing that they have to competition in the world right now is new Japan pro wrestling. And they are, if you're not watching WWE, you're watching that and it's pretty amazing stuff. I've only seen clips of it, and I know the stuff I've seen you could never do in WWE because 
they don't allow certain high flying moves just because mm -hmm. if, well, for example, if anybody, if you watch, watch, uh, one episode of raw, it's three hours. So you, you may want to fast forward a little bit. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same moves. There's no uniqueness. The only unique things that happens when they get an old timer, like diamond Dallas page, who's one of my all time favorite wrestlers to come out and do a move. And DDP is an old school wrestler. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's so dull. Uh, James and I, when James was my roommate, we would watch a two and a half, two hour raw. 30 minutes. Maybe. <laughs> Just because we, we would find all the good matches. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like the high flying that they do. I haven't watched it in quite a while in Lucha Underground, but I mean, for me, the story that they have going on got really boring. <laughs> I think the one thing wrestling is missing, because being a, as a WCW guy, WCW had amazing wrestling, crappy finishes, but the stories to me made up for it. Yeah. Uh, what were you, I mean, Matt? Were you WCW? What's up? What were you like? Were you a WCW guy, a WWE I, guy? I was, well, if this was in the mid 90s, I was a WWF guy. That's what I, I cut my teeth on right when the Attitude Era started. So you had mm. Stone Cold and The Rock and all that. So. I um, was kind of spoiled. Yeah, it was it was the good stuff. And then uh, I stopped really watching in like 2005 because it was just like, this is a soap opera and I'm kind of tired of it. Yeah. And the town that I lived in in California at the time, there was actually an indie promotion that would do shows monthly. That's so I just awesome. go to those. And those were a lot of fun. I got to see Matt Hardy wrestle in the gym at the junior high school I went to. Nice. That's awesome. And like that tripped me out. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, wait, 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 you had a career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I like the Hardy Boys back in the day. They were pretty they were pretty I've, good. I have always been a Hardy Boy fan. Um being a WCW guy, I was the uh, I was the NWO mm. fan. Um I hated Too those guys. <laughs> I, I hated the NWO and I was I was a giant mark from them just because how much I disliked them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um but, oh, man, seeing I've always wanted to go to one wrestling event, and then I was thankful. Uh, Jim Cornette has a podcast I listen to all the time, and he's talking about, like, one of the shows. <laughs> he uh, he had a – was it – there was like four or five cops, and he was just, as he was escaping where the, the the ring is, cops would disappear because people would would be grabbing cops, and the cops would have to stop them. And he had this big guy like bear hugging him. People have been stabbed. There's a story about you know. Um, of them being waylaid in the parking lot. I, I got to say, I like wrestling now when people know to some degree it's a work. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you imagine being a wrestler and next thing you know, you get shanked because you you uh, you you worked over one of their favorite wrestlers. <laughs> right. Uh, if you actually, if you do get a chance to go, go. I, actually, well, I went to my first event la in December of this past year, and it was a SmackDown Live event when they came to Austin. Oh, that's awesome. And um, Jeff, Jeff Hardy actually wrestled twice because you actually get three shows. You get their web only show, you get the main show, and then you get the mixed match or the mixed tag team match challenge, which is a lot of fun. But Jeff Hardy still has it. It's really awesome to see them do it for real. It's well, you know what I mean? Live. It's, it's, it's really, you really gain a better appreciation for it because you're seeing what they're doing and people in the know are like, that's really hard to do. So. Yeah. And, and of all the people that still wrestler wrestle excuse me how matt hardy can't physically wrestle and jeff hardy can amazes me because jeff hardy was the one doing what was it there's a a podcast i listened to and one of the the tlc matches um even matt hardy it was it was the bump it was the bump but it was what it was it was uh edge and jeff were grabbing the title and they were all like mm -hmm. kind of hanging on uh, the ladders and and like they're hanging on the belt yeah they were both basically jumping for the belt and Edge basically speared him in midair. Oh, that. Yeah, that and, was pretty cool. And all of them agreed there's only one person who would have taken that bump, and that was Jeff Hardy. Yep, that's absolutely true. Oh, if you guys want to see some crazy matches, I just heard about it. Look up, um, oh, God, what are those, those those metal pilings? You know, they build around buildings so you can work on it. You know what I'm talking about? Scaffolding? Yeah, yeah. scaffolding. Look up a scaffold matches. Oh, my God. They're, they're old school, but I couldn't imagine taking a bump off that thing. They're, they're insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're old school. I think it's because some, I think it was the midnight express versus the rock and roll express. So I think it's sometime in the mid eighties. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That's way back in the day. <laughs> um, 
I, at some point I want to go to, uh, I'd love to go to a wrestling event. It's just <laughs> here in Sacramento. I really hate downtown SAC and that's where the new, uh, <laughs> the new arena is the golden one center. Oh yeah. Um, and it's not so much getting there, but parking's a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arco arena was a little bit better. Um, the only problem with Arco Arena, if you ever saw any concerts there, if you didn't bring earplugs, you definitely lost hearing because the acoustics in that place sucked. M- my cousin saw a band there in the 80s, and it was so loud, he said people actually lost hearing. Uh, does not surprise me at all. I, uh, there was a, the only way I know what that's like is I went to, there was a band, uh, Sacramento band called The Council. It was an amazing band. I fell asleep in one of their concerts next to a full, spa- a full stack of speakers. I woke up like 20 minutes later and everybody sounded like the parents from the Peanuts, you know? Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, John, it's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Well, this is true. That's how too good of friends I, <laughs> I have. Hey, John, we can't. He- you-, you can't hear. You know, <laughs> this is their mouthing off, talking crap to me. <laughs> Which is funny. They didn't have to actually, you know, not you know, pretend to talk. No, nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so any, I, I'm I'm scrolling for for uh, for topics and what the hell. Hell if I know. Oh, so I'm one of my at your iPad. one of my favorite, one of my favorite Facebook pages is the Babylon Bee. They're, they're kind of like a mm-hmm. conservative onion, and there's a, a book my son loves called Was it Good Night Moon? Um, it's a cute book. It's very weird. I mean, it's definitely a kid's book because nothing makes sense. Um, there's a, it says John Hagee releases first children book, first children's book, Good Night Blood Moon. <laughs> <laughs> and just because I know the kids' book, I want them to release this book. <laughs> it's like Samuel Jackson did one called uh, "Go to Fuck to Sleep." <laughs> you know, no, you can't have a glass of water. Just go the fuck to sleep. It's a great. <laughs> By the way, everybody thinks I'm twisted for thinking that's funny. That is oh, pretty funny. funny. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's not twisted. He did the audio book version of it. That's the one I want to give the audiobook one was Samuel L. Jackson. And Chris Wa- Christopher Walken giving out, you know, children's stories. <laughs> Fairy Good tales. Night cow. Good night, moon. Good night, cow. <laughs> Jumping over the moon. This is terrible, <laughs> Christopher Walken. <laughs> it's it's better than I can do. The problem is all the books would automatically be longer, automatically add ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons did a bit of that where uh, Christopher Walken was telling uh, children's stories at the at the library. Why are you backing up, little Timmy? Come closer. <laughs> That's like, awesome. Uh, have you, have you guys epic. seen the, the video? Have you guys seen the video of Gilbert Gottfried reading Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh shit! Oh no! no. So is there? Does he really do that? Yeah, uh, it's it's he reads like bits and pieces of it, but it's like if you haven't seen it, you've done yourself a disservice, and you need to fix that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I'm, I, I'm going to have to find that because I, I love Gilbert Gottfried <laughs> just cause it, it, uh, every time I've seen him with the last probably 15 years, he doesn't care. Um, which is to me is great. Cause you got a comedian who's everybody loves and he just doesn't care what people think. So you get some great comedy out of that. True. That is, <laughs> that is part of his charm. Besides being the most annoying Jew in Hollywood. That's his, that's his tag. I actually got into trouble for, for saying that because it, uh, it was some sort of old TV show and it talked about Gilbert Gottfried. His tagline used to be the world's most annoying Jew. And I, I said that and my dad said, don't say that. But he just said it. So I, I have a question and I've I always wondered no. this. There's a, there's a picture on here this guy has every single Nintendo game made from 1985 to 2000. So my question is, the guy can't be married, can he? I have, I have roughly 450, 500 movies and I'm even, I I think I'm pushing it. I think if I get another space to my DVD rack, I may have to thin the herd a little bit. (laughs) I just, um, I wouldn't think he was, Married, I mean, 
you never know. There are some really hardcore gamer chicks that would probably really be into that. And do you think he has insurance on his collection? He damn well better. Because there's some of those cartridges, if he has every Nintendo game made, some of those general release ones are worth a freaking fortune. Oh, yeah, I guarantee he is. <laughs> but, I mean, you never you never really know. I mean, I would think he would. I mean, because even that collection has got to be praised at a couple hundred thousand dollars, probably, to fans. Because I have some rare movies and CDs. But the only reason why they're rare is because, A, they're either the first release and only an anal retentive son of a bitch like me who would actually care about that. Yeah. Or they're the Cowboy Bebop box set. <laughs> the, the, the actual audio, <laughs> the actual CD set. Um, right last time I looked a couple of months ago was going anywhere between 80 to $200. Oh, that's a good thing I didn't buy it then because I would just open it. <laughs> I well, don't I, care. I actually, well, I bought it. Uh, I bought it at least a decade ago and I listened to it. Not all the time, but I actually listened to it. I'm like, man, I shouldn't have opened it, but I think it was used. Oh, the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. It's the, Oh yeah. That shouldn't, that should not go unlistened to. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, hold on. I'm going to try something. Let's see what happened. Uh, no, it's not gonna. So our co-host just are, are, are the guy who was supposed to be on actually just called. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you give me a second an hour later and I'm going to try something, I don't know how well this is going to go. So give me a second. I'm going to see if I can add two calls. This might sound like audio chaos. So I'm using my new. Hey, you reached DR Griffin ah. marketing. Please leave your name. Are you there, Matt? Matt, are you there? Okay, sorry. I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna see if I could add another phone call in it, but I went it went straight to voicemail. <laughs> it's probably leaving you a voicemail. Uh, are you there? Hold on. Yeah, sorry. Are you there? I am. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. I have to use uh, Wi-Fi calling since where my studio is is it, kind of like the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Except everybody wonders where their cell phone connection went. Uh, actually, in I have to actually have to head out in about five minutes. I'm taking my roommate to work. So oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could be wrapping up anyways. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for being on. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you actually joining our last minute deal. So what's your what's, yeah, your, what's your podcast called? The podcast I'm on is called Arcade Zero. We have one episode right now. And we're looking at we're doing some more recording this year. Nice. Uh, just when we have the time. Nice. Awesome. Uh, check out the first episode, and where can you hear it? Uh, right now, you can hear it on SoundCloud. Okay. Awesome. So, what was it called again? Just, just Arcade Zero. <laughs> just, what was it? Arcade Zero Pod. Arcade Zero Podcast. Awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, check out Matt Brewer's Arcade <laughs> Zero. Podcast. Sorry, I'm getting blown okay. up by, by Don. So, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and uh, this week's special guest, Matt Brewer, as always, thank you for listening. Goodbye.